What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be going over how to create your very own World of Warcraft Cataclysm server from start to finish. This will be running patch version 4.3.4 and we're going to be utilizing the Cataclysm Preservation Project. This tutorial is strictly for educational purposes. You're going to want Windows 10 or 11 64-bit or Windows Server 2016, 2019 or 2022. For the server hardware specs, you're going to want two physical CPU cores. I personally recommend four physical cores to help speed up the compiling process. 8 gigabytes of RAM, 80 gigabytes of hard drive space. This is for the OS and binaries on the same drive along with breathing room. 100 megabit NIC. Let's go over the software prerequisites. So you're going to want 7-zip, git, .NET 6.0, desktop runtime, C++ redistributable runtimes, Git extensions, Boost, CMake, Notepad++, which is optional, but it's going to make things much easier, as you'll see later on the video. Heidi SQL, this is also optional. You can feel free to choose whichever SQL management software you'd like. MySQL version 8, Visual Studio 2022, and OpenSSL 1.1.1. And all of these can be the latest version. So let's go ahead and jump into beginning the process here. So I went ahead and pre-downloaded everything here, but I'll go ahead and show you where we're pulling all these from individually. And I'll also have links for them in the description below. So for 7-zip, we'll go ahead and open it up here. And so we'll go with the 64-bit environment. And we'll go ahead and kick it off and install nice and fast next one we'll move on to git and for git we'll go ahead and go to this website here and just go ahead and select that and we'll kick it off all right so let's go ahead and hit next and next again and the one thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the check daily for git windows updates now this isn't going to keep it up to date but it will go ahead and prompt us and let us know when there is an update, so we'll hit next, next again, and next again, leave all these, basically all as defaults, and we'll just keep hitting next. Just keep hitting next. Let that install. We're not gonna go ahead and view the release notes, we'll hit finish. Moving on is the .NET 6.0 desktop runtimes. So we'll go to this website here and then go ahead and scroll down to the .NET desktop runtime and then select the 64-bit environment. So we'll kick this off and install. And we can close out of that. Next will be the C++ redistributables. And so Tech Power Up has this really nice website which has the all-in-one Installer, which basically has every single version we could potentially need. So we'll go ahead and kick this off here. And the key thing is make sure to right click on that and run it as administrator. If you don't run it as an administrator, you'll have to click through all the prompts that come up. So this just makes it nice and automated. All right, next up is the Git extensions. And Git extensions will go here. And then basically download the MSI version. Don't do the portable version, but the MSI version. So we'll kick this off. And next, leave that as is. And next, next, next. I uncheck the telemetry and we'll hit next. And install it and finish. Next is boost. And thankfully SourceForge has pre-compiled area here. And you can go ahead and select the lazed and grazed version there. So we'll kick this off. And we'll hit next here. And boost does take a long time, so just give it some time. Let it do its thing and just be patient. I'll hit finish here. And moving on, we'll go to CMake. And for CMake, I never utilize the release candidate, 
always go for the latest actual release. And then we'll just pull from the 64-bit installer there. So we'll kick this guy off. Hit next, accept the terms, and next. I actually go ahead and select the desktop icon. That way it makes things a little bit easier. So I'll hit next. Next again and install. And finish. Next up will be Notepad++. Just download Lace and Grazed version on their website. I'll hit OK. Next. I agree. Next again. Leave everything as is here. Hit next. Install. And we are going to run it just because I'm going to go ahead and set the dark mode preference. So we're just going to go to settings. Preferences. And then dark mode, dark mode on, hit close, close out of that, and we'll go to file and exit. Next up will be Heidi SQL. And so you would go ahead and go to the downloads, click on installer, and then just download the latest and greatest version. So we'll kick this off. Install for all users. I accept and next. Next, next. I do uncheck the automatically report the client and server versions back to them. Hit next. Install. We don't need to launch it, so we'll just hit finish. Next up will be MySQL. For MySQL, you would come here and then click on the go to download page. And then I select the larger of the installers there aka it's the offline installer or for the most part it's offline so we'll kick it off here and then we're going to go ahead and select the server only option here and then we can hit next and execute you can show details make it a little entertaining and next again next we'll drop this down to server computer and then leave everything else as is here and hit next. And we will leave the recommended section there for it. So we'll hit next. So the key thing here is to remember to put in a password that you'll actually remember here. So this is also the, the opportunity to go ahead and add a user if you wanted to harden this server. Now, we won't be going that in depth but I will kind of show some areas where you could potentially harden things. So basically you can add a user there, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and type in a password here for root. And we'll go ahead and type in the password of bananas. And bananas will be for the fantastic banana bread recipe that I'll have down in the description section down below there. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Next again, and then execute. And we'll finish. Next again, and finish. Move on to Visual Studio 2022. And so Visual Studio, just go ahead and click on download there and select the Community 2022 edition. So we'll kick that off and we'll continue. And so everything about Visual Studio is pretty, pretty dense application. So it's going to take some time to kind of download everything and install everything here. So just be patient with each section that we go through. So the key thing here is that we want to go ahead and scroll down and select the desktop development with C++. So we'll go ahead and check that. Now you can go ahead and nitpick things out of here, but I'll go ahead and just leave everything as is here just for the purpose of this video. And the only other thing is I go ahead and click in here and I select download all and then install just because sometimes I've seen weird things happen. And of course it's gonna be almost 10 gigs in size, so we'll click install. And this is gonna take a while, so just be patient. Feel free to wander off, take a nap, or maybe go ahead and get that banana bread recipe going. 
So now that it's installed, we're going to go ahead and do skip this for now. You could certainly sign in and all that good stuff, but we'll skip it for now. You can choose your color theme. I'm just going to leave it as dark. So we'll do start Visual Studio. And this is just to kind of finish the installation process here. And so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and do continue without code. And then we can close out of this and we can go ahead and close out of Visual Studio for now. Close out of that. Next up, we'll go ahead and install OpenSSL. So we'll go to the website here. So if you scroll all the way down, key thing, as I'd mentioned, is we need version 1.1.1, latest and greatest version, in this case, 1.1.1t. And the key thing is don't, don't do the light version. If you get the Microsoft Defender Smart Screen section here, just click More Info and Run Anyway. It is safe. And I accept. And Next. Next. Next again. And then for here, we're going to go ahead and select the option that is going to go in the bin directory. So we'll hit Next and Install. You can certainly feel free to donate here, but for right now, we're just going to uncheck that. And we'll hit Finish. All right, so now we need to go ahead and adjust the environmental variables. So there's two options. One is if you have this PC on your desktop, you can just right click it and go to properties. And then you can just select advanced system settings and then environmental variables. If you don't have it, then just go down to start settings, aka the gear system. And then about and then advanced setting, system settings on the right and environmental variables. So the key thing is that we need to add a system variables in, not a user variables. So we'll click new. And then I'll go ahead and copy and paste in the variable name. It's going to be boost underscore root. We'll get rid of these spaces here. It's going to be all caps. And I'll copy in the variable value here. And obviously, if you download a newer version, then you would just go ahead and change out the number that you see there. So just make sure you have the proper number set there. Otherwise, it's not going to play nice for you. So we'll hit OK and OK again. OK, close out of this. Now we'll want to go ahead and reboot the computer or the server. So we'll go ahead and reboot and I will see you back as soon as it's all back up. All right, now that the machine is back up, we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the process of pulling the information down from Git. So we'll go to the C drive. We're going to go ahead and create two folders in here. So we'll do new folder and we're going to go ahead and call it Trinity. And then we'll create the second folder called build. So now we can go ahead and right click on Trinity and then we'll go up to Git ext clone or Git extension clone. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Select the language. And then I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this here and apply so it doesn't pop up every time. So now what we need to do is we need to add in the URL for the repository to clone. So we'll go to the Cataclysm project here. We're going to go ahead and copy the URL and we'll paste it right in here. And we can close out of that. And so we'll go ahead and get rid of the subdirectory. We don't need that. And then for the branch, we're going to click on here and then select master. And then we'll go ahead and leave everything else as is and then we can click clone. And then it's going to go ahead and download everything we need here to move forward. All right, so now that's all downloaded, we can go ahead and click on OK. And next, we're going to go ahead and fire up CMake. And so for the where the source code is, we're going to browse to the Trinity folder that we created. And then select folder. And then for where the build binaries will be going, we're going to go ahead and select the build folder select folder and then now we can click configure and we'll leave this all as is the default's going to be 64 bits so that's fine so we'll hit finish 
Let this go ahead and crunch. All right. So don't worry about everything being red here, but the key thing is if we scroll up a little bit here, and we're going to look for the boost section. Boost is usually the failure point, but the key thing is it did not error out here, so that's good. As long as you followed everything in this video, everything should be happy at this point. So we're going to go ahead and leave everything here as is for this video. And then what we've got to do is we need to go ahead and select configure one more time so that this section is not red. So we'll click it again. And now it's not red anymore, so we'll go ahead and select generate. And then we'll go ahead and open project, which will launch Visual Studio. Select Visual Studio. And then we'll go ahead and check that so it opens all solution files in Visual Studio from here on out. And so the other thing I like to do is I like to make sure that Visual Studio is actually at rest. So we're going to wait until the scribbling stops down in the bottom left there. So we'll give it a moment. All right, scribbling is stopped. So up here, let's go ahead and drop this down to rel with deb info, aka release with debug info. So we'll click that. We'll leave it as 64 bit. And then we're going to go ahead and right click on all build and we're going to select clean. Shouldn't take very long. All right, clean is done. So we're going to right click one more time and select build. And then this is the one that's going to take some time. So give it at least 30 minutes and then come back and check on it. All right, so the key thing is here is that we see in this section here that build 26 succeeded, zero failed, zero up to date, zero skipped. So that all looks good. So we can go ahead and close out of Visual Studio. Close out of CMake. And now we can go ahead and go into the build folder and bin and rel with deb info. And then here's everything that compiled for us here. So there's a number of things now that we need to go ahead and move into this section for dependencies. So the first one we're going to do is we are going to go into MySQL and move the dependency from there. So we're going to just right click, File Explorer, this PC, and then we'll go to the C drive, Program Files, MySQL, MySQL Server 8.0, the lib folder for library. And then we need to copy lib mysql.dll. So I'll right click on that, copy it, and we'll paste it right in here. Next up, we need two DLLs from OpenSSL. So we'll go ahead and hunt that down now. So we'll go back to program files, OpenSSL win64. And then we're going to go into the bin folder and then we'll go ahead and copy lib crypto and lib ssl copy those paste them in now what we need to do is move the server data into here which is the various map data i'll have a link in the description below so you'll be able to just go ahead and download this section here but we'll go ahead and go in here so we need the cameras dbc maps m maps and v maps data so we'll copy these and we'll paste them in here and this will take a while so just be patient okay so now that those are moved over we're going to go ahead and move some other files in while we're here so we're going to go ahead and open up edge and then we're going to go to the database world page here and so we're going to go ahead and download that there. And this has the SQL files we'll need in a little bit. So we'll go ahead and right click on it, 7-zip, extract files. And we'll go ahead and point it down into the C drive, build, bin, rel with deb info, and hit OK. OK again. Now what we actually need to do is we need to copy these out and paste them in here. And then we can just go ahead and delete that folder. It's going to expect it 
to be in this specific area. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and drop the .dist on the conf file. So we'll right click on it, rename, go ahead and delete out the .dist. And yes, that's fine. And then we just need to locate one more, which is a little bit further down here. So the worldserver.conf.dist, let's go ahead and drop dist off of that again. And yes. And then let's go ahead and open up this in Notepad++. Then we're going to go ahead and scroll down to line 110. And so in this section, this is where you would go ahead and change out the username and password that you would have in SQL. This is kind of the spot where I'd mentioned about hardening the server. So this would be your option, your opportunity to go ahead and change this. But anyhow, we're going to go ahead and type in root and then bananas for the fantastic banana bread recipe. We're basically just going to repeat this right down the line, changing out the first trinity with root, second trinity with that password. Copy this to make it a little bit faster here. That all looks good. So we'll go ahead and save this. And then we need to do kind of the same with the bnetserver.com file. So we'll right click on that, edit with Notepad++, and we need to scroll down to line 167. And here it is. Once again, just do the same exact thing. Change out the password, change out the username. And then that should be good. And then we'll go ahead and save that also. And then we can go ahead and close out of Notepad++. So go up to View. We're going to go ahead and check File Name Extensions. And we're going to just check Hidden Items just to have that set. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. Let's go ahead and kick off the world server.exe. Just go ahead and double click on it. And it's going to go ahead and say these uh, databases don't exist. So every time it pops up saying it doesn't exist, just go ahead and type in yes and hit enter. And then once again, the characters database doesn't exist. So we'll hit yes and enter. And then the world database doesn't exist. So yes, enter again. And then hot fixes doesn't exist. So yes, and enter again. And so this is going to take a few minutes. For the world database here, it's going to take some time. But anyhow, if you're curious to see if anything's actually happening, you can right click the taskbar, go ahead and click task manager, and we can open task manager here to see that something is actually happening. So just be patient, let it go ahead and crunch. All the warnings talking about using password and command line is all perfectly fine. And if you get the firewall pop up here, just go ahead and check the private networks and do allow access. At this point, the world server is now live. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and shut this down for now. What I recommend for a graceful shutdown is if you go ahead and type in server shutdown and one, which is the amount of seconds, you can go ahead and change up the amount of seconds to as much as you want, but one's going to bring it down nice and fast here. And it's dropped, so that's good. So let's go ahead and actually see if everything is functioning okay for now. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the BNet server here. You can go ahead and check that, and we'll allow access. So that looks fine, and we'll kick off world server again. Just to make sure everything plays nice and both stay up. Alright, key thing is, is that both are actually holding here. They didn't error out in any way. So that all looks good. So let's go ahead and shut both of them down again. So we'll do the server shut down one. And then for the BNet server, you just do control C. And we'll control C one more time in just a second if it doesn't drop. All right. So now let's go ahead and pop open Heidi SQL because we need to go ahead and customize the realm list table so we're going to pop this open hit new we'll leave root there we'll go ahead and type in the fantastic bananas for the fantastic banana recipe we'll hit open 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the auth database. We'll expand that out and we'll scroll down to realm list table. And then we'll expand that out. And then the data tab, we'll go ahead and click into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the IP of this is. So you can type in CMD and hit enter for command prompt. And then just go ahead and type in IP config and hit enter. And then let's go ahead and copy the IP out here. And then we'll go ahead and toss it into the address, not the local address section. And then we'll just expand that out. So that looks good. So this is also your opportunity to change out the realm name here. We can also just double check the subnet mask is okay. In this case, everything looks good for that, so that's fine. And then we'll keep local address as is. Like I said, port, leave it as is, icon, flag, time zone. I'll go ahead and have a link down below that kind of explains the adjustments for those. That would be like PVP server or PVE server or RP server, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and change out the name. We'll go ahead and put in bananas just because we can. And then just click out of it and it go ahead and saves the data as you see down at the bottom there. So we'll do file, exit, and we'll close out our command prompt and close out of some of this other stuff here that we don't need anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and kick off the BNet server one more time just to make sure it didn't hiccup with the changes we made, but the key thing is that's holding, so that's good. And then let's go ahead and kick off the world server. All right, so the key thing is those are holding, so that's perfect. So that looks great. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and create an account since this is a blank, server so what you want to go ahead and do is select the world server make sure that's open and then type in bnet account space create space the username so in this case it has to be email based basically it has to have an at something.com to it so we'll go ahead and do test one at test.com and then space and then the password is next, so we'll just type in test and hit enter. And now the account has been created, so test1 at test.com. And so that account is now live. So at this point, I'll go ahead and leave it up to you to go ahead and configure everything else up. At this point, everything is good to go. I'll be following up this video with a how-to guide and keeping it up to date with the latest commits as well as a video on patching the game client to be able to connect to this server. If you found this video to be useful, please like it. And if you want to continue to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Anyhow, take it easy.